Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to 2019. Happy New Year to you all. I thought I'd start the new year off by doing a tutorial on Google Earth Studio, which just came out. It's actually in beta, so you have to get invited to the program, but just fill out the form and I got invited to it within a day. So before I jump in, I want to make sure that you know that there is a permission and licensing tab. I'll put the link below. Before you use it, make sure that you go through all the permission stuff and make sure that you're able to use it. And after you do that, let's jump right in. So I'm gonna make this tutorial. You can play around with your dimensions and duration before you start setting it up. And we'll just do 250 frames and start. All right, so here is your software, which is pretty crazy that it's just sitting right here in our Chrome browser. And we have uh, basically a lightweight version of After Effects with uh, cameras, keyframes, and a viewport that we can play around in. All right, so you can do a pretty typical zoom in just by doing the old scroll wheel. You can do a keyframe and zoom in, but we've seen that all a lot. So this actually gets a little bit more interesting when you start doing um, 3D data. So if we go to view and then click on available 3D cities, so that's a great way to kind of isolate the places that actually have 3D data. Let's actually just jump to Chicago and we can even dial that in. Let's go to Sears Tower, Sears Tower, Chicago. And here is Sears Tower. Now it looks pretty flat, but if we hold down Alt and then pivot, you can see that these buildings are actually all 3D, which is really, really amazing. So a lot of the big cities are mapped already and they're pretty good resolution. Um, as you zoom in, it's gonna buffer and load the textures. You can see they're flickering a bit. They're just kind of loading as my internet catches up with it and they're getting clearer and clearer as we sit here. But you're probably gonna wanna treat this more like a helicopter shot type thing instead of getting too close. But if you did something like this, the uh, quality is pretty decent. So let's go ahead and make a keyframe right here. So here's our keyframe button for making keyframe for all the attributes. And we'll go to the end and let's just pivot around here. Maybe move our camera this way. If you wanna see full screen, you can hit uh, F and then jump out of that with full screen again. So something like that. And we'll make another keyframe. So now if we go to the beginning, hit space bar, you can see that we have a really cool uh, helicopter shot over this building. So already looking pretty cool. If you wanna jump into the F curves, you can do that by clicking on any of these attributes. So uh, longitude, right now they're just straight linear, so you'd have to highlight them, right click, and go to auto ease, and then click on one that you wanna play with, and you can play with this just like a typical F curve editor, which is very nice. All right, so let's talk about adding attributes. So right here, this add attributes button, we have a bunch of different options here. Uh, we can do clouds, ocean overlay, we can play with the time of day, and we can play with the field of view and the camera target. All right, so I cleared out the keyframes and I'm gonna show you how to do the camera target really quick. We'll just click on camera target and we're gonna get a little map here and a little target on it. Let's hit done. So let's move around this target and you can see that it's roughly sitting on Sears Tower and then we can also move the camera and the camera's gonna rotate around it. So that looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and make a keyframe go to the end and we'll do a little bit of a spin around Sears Tower and that will be our animation now. So that looks very nice. All right, let's go back to that add attributes and let's go to our field of view. If we check that on, we now have an option for field of view right here and we can play around with the field of view. We can make it really wide or we can push that in and make a bit more of a zoomed in helicopter type look. So something like that, and that looks really, really nice. All right, so before we render this out to After Effects, we want to be able to bring in the 3D camera data and some tracking points so that we can composite. So what we're gonna do is right click on the Sears Tower and we're gonna click Set Track Point. And once we do that, we're going to see that we have a little track point set here. And that's all we need to do to bring this into After Effects. So we can go back to one camera view double check everything and we're gonna render it out. So let's hit the render button. All right, so we are gonna have a Google Earth watermark right here and there's no way to get rid of that. You can move it to some of the different corners if you want, but it has to be there if you're gonna use this, uh, this product. So just so that you're aware. All right, so we have frames zero through 250, 19, 20 by 1080. Make sure you click on the advanced tab and under here we have include 3D tracking data and we're gonna to wanna to include that and then make sure your texture quality is set to high. All right, then all we have to do is hit start to render. 
and you have to keep this tab open actually for it to keep rendering. So keep this tab open. It doesn't take very long and after it does that, it's gonna compile everything into a zip file which you can download. All right, so it just finished and it downloaded a zip file. So we'll just show that in the folder. We'll right click and we'll extract the files. All right, so we have a tutorial.esp, a tutorial.jsx, and we have a footage folder. So in the folder, it's all of our JPEGs. So we're gonna go ahead and open After Effects and we'll import those. So we'll import file, go back to our downloads, to footage, and we'll import that JPEG sequence and make a new composition. All right, so here is our very nice render. And next we're gonna bring in the camera data and the tracking points. So this is actually a script we have to run. So we're gonna to go to File, Scripts, and then Run Script File. And we're looking for that .jsx file. So this is the script file. Let's just open that up. And it's running the script and then it's importing our text layer and our tracking points. So it looks like I have two tracking points. We'll delete the first one. And then we have a text layer, which is way too big. So I'm just gonna scale that down. And then we have our track point null and a camera, which is fantastic. Let's actually uh, rotate that 90 degrees. So now you have a tracking point, you have text, you have a camera, and you can do any kind of compositing that you want. I don't think there's any way to bring object buffers yet. So that's something you're gonna have to deal with, but it's still pretty rad that you can get uh, tracking points out of there. All right, so there's one other thing I wanted to show you before we wrap this up. And let's go to a new project, and I'm gonna show you a little problem that sometimes will get you. All right, let's say that we wanna do a satellite zoom. So we're gonna make a keyframe. We'll go to say 150 frames, and we're just gonna zoom in. And let's say that we wanna end up right here. So we'll hit another keyframe, and let's see what this looks like. So hit spacebar. You'll notice that it goes really slow and then all of a sudden at the end it just whips into there and it's uh, not a very linear uh, kind of a ramp even though these are linear keyframes. The reason for that has something to do with math or something. Hello, darkness, my old friend. But I do know how to fix it and all you have to do is right click all of your keyframes, go to animation, advanced, and logarithmic altitude experimental. So I don't know what any of those words mean. All I know is that it smooths out the speed of that zoom in so that you can actually use this shot. So that's how you would do that. Again, that's under animation, advanced, and logarithmic altitude. Make sure you check that on. So that's Google Earth Studios. I can definitely see myself using this on a lot of projects. It's actually very handy and fun to use. But the really cool thing is seeing software that is built right into your web browser. And uh, I think we're gonna start seeing a lot more of this kind of stuff and it's an exciting time to be in our industry. So hope you guys found that useful. As always, thank you for checking out the Pixel Lab. And may I also say, Happy New Year, everybody. I hope that 2019 treats you well. See you next time. Ciao.